Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar Wednesdays. Uh, we are doing a series on coaching through COVID. And so today we have some of our friends from the Capstone Center of, from, of Student Success, the Capstone Center for Student Success, joining us to kind of talk about their role and how you can support your student through this difficult time. Um, I have Dr. Jennifer Roth Brunette, and I'll let her introduce herself and her team as well. And we will go from there. Thank you. Um, I am Jennifer Roth Burnett. I'm the Director of Academic Support at the Capstone Center for Student Success, uh, where we offer tutoring and academic coaching to all UA students. And today I've invited some of our coaching staff to join us, and I'm just going to kind of let them introduce themselves, beginning with Ms. Grant. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. Hello, my name is Kiara Grant, and I'm an academic coach at the Capstone Center. Um, I am a full-time professional coach at the Capstone Center. So, yeah. All right. And how about um, Madison Woods? Hi, y'all. Howdy. Um, my name is Madison Woods. I'm a peer coach at the Capstone Center for Student Success. I am a fifth-year senior. Um, I'm an international relations major. I'm double minoring in Japanese and Spanish, and I'm also in the Honors College. Wonderful. Thank you, Madison. And Cole? Hey, guys. I'm Cole. I also work at the Capstone Center for Student Success as a peer coach like Madison. Um, I'm a senior this year. Um, I'm an economics major, a biology minor on the pre-dental track. Sorry about the train. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I thought I would start today with an overview of our services and then we would dig in and do some of the specific advice that our coaches have for, uh, for students during this time and for parents supporting students during this time. So I'm just going to share my screen. And so here we are, we are the Capstone Center for Student Success, as I said, and we are actually located in Russell Hall. So I know that under current conditions, uh, students are still able actually to reserve study space um, and to use computers by reservation in the Capstone Center for Student Success. But we are, um, a program that has some advising for particular students as well as outreach and support for first generation students and for students who come out of foster care, for example. But we also have, as I said before, tutoring and coaching for every student at the University of Alabama. And you can see our website is success.ua.edu. Um, we find that successful students participate in Capstone Center offerings and that students who want to be successful um, will, will find that achievable with support from our peer tutors, our peer coaches, and our full-time pro coaching staff. Uh, we offer tutoring for a range of classes, usually kind of the lower level uh, freshman, sophomore type core curriculum classes, many of them as well as academic coaching to help you develop your personalized success strategy. So our tutors are fellow students. They are peers who made an A or an A plus in the class. They are recommended to us by faculty. And so they are generally students who they've had the same professors before, they've had the same material. And so they're really able to speak in a, a direct experiential way to the material as they work with folks who come to tutoring. Peer coaches likewise are UA students and they have, many of them had to kind of figure out on their own how to be academically successful and they have uh, great experience-based advice and strategies for students who are interested in upping their academic game. So the Capstone Center is on the second and third floor of Russell Hall. Under current conditions, as I said, many of our services are by appointment and also by Zoom. Everything that you can do um, in most semesters in person is available 
online now. So all of our tutoring is available online. All of our coaching is available online as well as are our study skill sessions. So this is just a listing of the classes for which we currently offer tutoring. Um, all of the maths up through calculus, the uh, biologies, the lower level biologies for majors and non-majors, uh, the entry level chemistries as well for people who are going into the hard sciences or engineering as well as into nursing. Uh, we have accounting, psychology, we're bringing online economics and stats um, and more. So our list is growing. If you don't find that the subject you need tutored is listed here or offered in house, we have a good list of resources and can point you in the right direction for that. The peer tutors, as I said, meet selection criteria. We work with faculty to identify them. And they are also trained and certified under the CRLA model, which is one of the primary national organizations for certifying and training peer tutors. So if you access tutoring online, uh, you'll work with peer tutors during drop-in sessions or by appointment. It's really basically the same as uh, coming face-to-face -face on campus, except that you've got actually kind of a closer connection through uh, the video type Zoom connection now. Um, and in the future, we look forward to having large groups back in Russell as we have last year. So something that we always encourage students regarding tutoring, and we hope parents will uh, encourage them as well, is to start early. Uh, don't wait until you have a problem or until you have really kind of dug yourself a hole. If you feel like you need a little bit of help understanding the material, that's what we're there for. And if you really just wanna meet with a tutor a couple of times and make sure that you're on track, we're there for that as well. So we encourage students to start early, to engage often, um, to build the relationship with the tutor. Our, our tutors love what they do because they get to meet and work with UA students and can be a source to help you stay accountable and on top of your schoolwork. Um, academic coaching is a little different from tutoring. Tutoring is subject specific. Academic coaching is more generalized, which is to say a coach would be helping a student look at your study strategies, your time management, how are you preparing for tests, the, um, kind of global uh, metacognitive or understanding how you learn and how you can lend some organization and some uh, strategy to what you're doing. Professional coaches also are here and can work a little bit more in depth even with students on identifying strategies that will work for them and in holding them accountable to implement those. So we do have kind of a performance-based coaching model, which is to say we work with students to help them identify what the issues may be, to formulate plans to address those issues uh, to try that out and then to come back to coaching to say well I, I tried this this part worked this part didn't and then we kind of start that process again so we also offer academic skill building and this these are just little um, seminars they're zoom based now um, and then the future will be back in the a classroom type setting with them on topics like time management effective study habits, learning styles, avoiding procrastination, and the other topics that you see listed here. So these are small group sessions. So whereas coaching is one-on-one, -on -one, the skill building sessions are really just small group sessions where we present a topic and then we have kind of an immediate application of that and an opportunity to work through some of those ideas together. We also offer skill building with student lingo. And this is um, a really excellent series of little, like little mini web courses or kind of webinars about certain topics. And we've provided that because we find that some students um, would rather work through a topic like that on their own. We wanna make that possible for them. These are available 24 seven and can be accessed through our website at any time. And so here's a little listing of the kinds of topics that are offered. I'll say that what you see on the screen 
um, we have switched some of those topics out for specifically online success topics. And again, you can find us at success.ua.edu. The services that we offer are free to all UA students. Everything that we offer is free and we are making services available, as I said, online, but also in person as needed. And so here's just a little screenshot of our website. I hope you'll, you'll visit the website and uh, let us know if you have questions. But now I'd really like to turn to the, the meat and potatoes of this webinar and focus on advice from our peer and pro coaches. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I'd like to start with the, a question about social, emotional, and mental health, and uh, actually begin with Madison, who had some thoughts to share on that. So hi, once again. Um, I know with how school is going right now, people may not feel like they're getting the actual experience they signed up for. Me being an out-of-state student, I can definitely relate to that. And I can definitely speak to how much of a transition it was for me to get here and then find my way, make my friends, get adjusted to campus life and all that stuff. And so now something to truly focus on is making sure you yourself and your mental health is in, is in a decent place. Because I understand being cooped up in your room or not being able to leave your dorm room if you are on campus can get very repetitive and very monotonous at times. So you want to find ways to break that up. And something I champion uh, very much so in my own personal life is using resources on campus. And then in this case, the counseling center. That's someone you can talk to, someone you can uh, go and vent to whenever you need to. It's a friendly face, someone who's there to support you and who's in your corner. Uh, other ways to boost your mental health would be to find things that inspire you and that help you scratch that creative itch per se. So whether that's drawing, I even have, gonna bring out my, since I'm in my room, might as well, even getting little canvases like this one and spending your days coloring or drawing, painting, crafting and knitting and stuff like that. Finding things to occupy your time that's not only school, but that's something that can improve your quality of life and give you a new skill or give you something to focus on other than the current state of things. So, so Madison, a quick question. <laughs> How would you say your family, parents, um, how can they support their student during this time? So I know that is pretty important to students to also have that family support. So if you can talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, I can, well, my family in particular is, we're spread out all across the country and something we started at the beginning of uh, quarantine back in maybe March or April, we have either monthly or bi-weekly family Zoom calls. And those can get pretty, pretty interesting uh, every so often, but it's a way for us to check in on each other. And I do have an, an elderly grandparent. And so we all check in to make sure he is okay. Because with the whole COVID situation, we want to make sure he is in the safest spot he can be. And so he knows his family is behind him as well. But when it comes to students, definitely parents, just be there for your kids. Understand that they are going through one of the biggest transitions in their life I think to date, I just, especially for our uh, incoming freshmen who just finished their senior year like they did, having half of it cut short and then coming into college in this kind of way, they are going through a lot mentally and will need your support and need some leniency from you when it comes to, like sometimes grades will not be the most important thing. Your child's mental health and their quality of life and well-being will have to take front seat sometimes. And I understand this is an academic setting and this is an academic institution it's not always going to have to take priority, especially in times like this that are so emotionally jarring and confusing for someone who's just went from being a high school senior to a college freshman who's not getting the experience they usually signed up for, especially the experience I got when I was a freshman. So that's something that can be, you almost feel like you're missing out. And so being there to support your children in a way in which they know that they, if they have a bad day, they can call you up and be like, mom, dad, listen. Today was just not it. Um, I'm considering going to. I'm considering going to talk to the counseling center or trying to have Zoom calls with my friends from high school and things like that. Encouraging them to connect with people, I think, would be the best thing I could suggest. Encouraging them to connect with people, whether that be family, friends, or even making new friends here. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> 
Okay, um, thank you, Madison. I think Cole also had some really good ideas about how to uh, reach fellow classmates and students. Yeah, um, <clears throat> specifically, you know, when you're in your class, um, there's a thing called GroupMe. And so if you go onto your Blackboard directory, you can find all the names of people in your class and you can send everybody emails to link to this group me so that you can all converse together so that you guys can all help each other so that you have somebody in the class that's going to answer your questions when you need them or things like that, that you might not get immediately from your teacher. Um, but also you can branch off kind of into study groups. Um, I actually did this the other week with a friend of mine. Um, we went to the library. Um, we had to sit six feet apart. We made sure everybody was safe with masks and everything, but then we still got to be able to collaborate together and work on the same project together while being in the same space. Um, that definitely really helps with communication and understanding what each other, we want from each other. Um, it, to kind of tie that into with what we want from parents is I, I think it's just pushing your kids to find these resources, you know, maybe helping them out to go Google these resources and find those resources for these kids because I know my parents are very supportive and they're always sending me links to articles and links to different websites and just those little links, me clicking on them and learning something really helps me and it really helps our connection with each other as well. Um, Cause I know that they're looking out for me and then that they're trying to support me at the same time. And those little things parents can really do to help their child because their child's going through a lot right now with everything that's happening with COVID being on this campus in a completely different time zone possibly for them. So, parents can kind of ease the burden for these students, I think that would really help them go a long way. That's great advice. Thank you. Ms. Grant, you also had some specific tools that you have recommended to students. I have to unmute, <laughs> unmute myself. Um, so just in, in, in speaking about I guess um, mental health and just that need to connect with people. So just like uh, Madison and Cole gave some some good options, I definitely um, would suggest in a way to kind of help integrate. I guess that study academic um, portion into the conversation would be definitely maybe establishing like a study group. So you know five friends or five people you would like to get to know that you're taking the class with, you know, invite them to a Zoom session or meet, have a meetup on team. So say, hey, we, we are in class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. How about Tuesday, Thursday for an hour, um, half an hour, we just get on a team's call and just look at each other. We can meet the phone or meet the um, video we're just working um, together with someone. So we know at this time, I know these four people are also doing the same thing I'm doing. If I have a question, I can just say it because even though they're not with me physically um, and we're not you know, at a public place, we're not at the library, we're at our homes or at our residence halls, um, we're still able to kind of have that connection piece. Um, so I think that's just really important. I know um, in a lot of the virtual conferences we attended this summer that has been a very big kind of buzzword it's just like connectivity um just you know because that's what people want if they can't get it physically they need it some other kind of way so that is definitely a push and so i think you know not only um doing the group meetings um making sure that you are talking with a professional that can help you know if it is i know with our counseling a center, you're able to talk to a counselor one on one. They also do group counseling. So if there's a special topic or broad topic um, that several people would like to just come and talk about and kind of create that safe space to, um, you know, say what's on your heart or say how you're feeling and then kind of get other perspectives about how they're approaching that same uh, topic or issue or concern. Um, you know, that's something that is, is really important and definitely needed. Um, so just you know, finding that way or trying several ways to make sure you're still connecting. Because, you know, we, we could be fine, you know, just not talking, not doing, doing your classwork, you know, but you want to be happy as well. And you want to have, you know, a, a, 
a strong kind of fortitude and a, a mental fortitude that helps you succeed despite the challenges going on. Thank you. So, and I have a quick question. I and mean, this is since everybody kind of answered on the mental health piece, this is kind of for everybody, including you. Um, what questions should family members be asking during this time to make sure that they are supporting their students academically um, with their mental health? Um, what are some of the, the key things? Because they may not know that there's this resource on campus or they may just say, hey, how are your classes? And the student says, fine. You know, so what ways could they kind of pry into really understanding what their student needs? I, I would say um, for myself that I am seeing a lot of students in the classes that I teach interacting with students that they are becoming very isolated. And especially if they're new on campus that they are um, really struggling to reach out and meet people because already there are some obstacles or challenges to that. And so I would say you are your child's parent. You know your child. And so like lean into what you know about them to help ensure that they are finding ways to have connection because we don't want anyone to feel isolated or to be isolated. Um, but they, they are gonna have to sometimes stick their neck out a little bit to, to make those connections. And so they're not maybe as fluid or as easy as before. So I would, I would think that that kind of encouragement to find ways around those challenges is, and to make sure that they're connecting with other students. And I saw Madison also had something to offer on that. Yeah, so, I, <clears throat> excuse me. So I would say on a similar, similar note to Dr. Rose Burnett, like, Parents know their children and something, it's not necessarily a question, but if you start to get the impression that they aren't enjoying the things they used to, or they aren't as passionate about something that they used to love so dearly, those are very immediate signs that something is changing either in their environment externally or internally. So if, if your child starts to not act like themselves, is a very big, strong indicator. And UA has a bevy of resources when it comes to student organizations and um, outreach programs. So if say, say for instance, your child is, is a gamer or something and likes to play video games or something, I can almost guarantee you there is an organization dedicated to competitive video gaming at UA. And just like everyone, like we at CCSS have made the transition online, a lot of our organizations have done the same and a lot of our resources have done the same. So you as a parent, I'll, it's a Google search away. If you know that your child is interested in something, maybe help them find that club or that resource that could speak to their interests and give them, you help them essentially are helping them stick their neck out in, in Dr. Rose Burnett's words and that kind of thing. And to find, help them find friends, help them find people who have common interests to help them reconnect with themselves, to put it plainly. Thank you, Madison. So, um, so we, the next topic, that, the kind of large topic that we had on our list um, was is time management and motivation. And I'll say that uh, of our of our entire coaching staff, I think Madison is the most proactive time manager I have ever met in my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's amazing. And Cole has really great ideas um, on maintaining motivation. So I'd like to hand it to them for just a moment. Let's start with Madison. All right. Time management is a topic I hold near and dear to my little heart. If you can't see behind me, this board right here is a dry erase board my mom found for me at Michael's, I believe, it has a monthly layout and a weekly layout and a to-do list section, and it stays full on any given day. And then to my left, I have another dry erase board where I also put my agenda for the day. So I very much am a strong proponent of time management, especially something I personally experienced over the summer uh, during quarantine and whatnot. I worked online and I didn't have any online classes, so I was in my room a majority of my day. And something that helped me bring myself out of that. I started planning out my days, like actually physically putting pen to paper 
and writing out what I was going to do at eight o'clock, when I was going to wake up, when I was going to watch my favorite TV show, when I was going to go to work. And it, it gave me a sense of accomplishment and a sense of normalcy. And I know for our freshmen, even our uh, returning students, having classes that are online or, or hybrid where you don't always have to go in person, I know it is very, very tempting to want to just wake up, roll over and uh, join the little Zoom call. You're not necessarily giving all that you can to your education when you do that. I understand it's very convenient, it's very easy, but if you put forth the effort of getting up in the morning, making your bed, putting on actual human clothes to go to class, it'll make you feel like you're actually contributing as much as you can to your education, to your classes. Because the last thing you want to do is just kind of ride the way to the end of the semester, and then you, you don't know how you got there and you don't know how to recover. Mind you, we here at the CCSS can help you with that should that time come, but we don't want you to get there. So it's very much taking your education in your own hands since you don't have a regular in-person class schedule to keep, to keep you accountable, you now have to be that accountability for yourself, if that makes sense. So writing out your classes, even if your class is online, setting out um, or blocking out an hour or an hour and a half for you to actually sit down and watch the lecture, study for the test, take notes, will actually give you a sense of normalcy and a sense of routine and a sense of accomplishment when you do that. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Those are great tips. And Cole, you had some advice to share about staying motivated. Yeah, so I think this is definitely going to be <clears throat> probably one of the hardest things for students coming in their freshman year or coming back this semester, just because with everything that's been happening, we've been out of school for the last five months. And so we need to really get reaccustomed to everything that's going on, but in a new setting, in a new way. Um, and I think the biggest way that you can kind of really set that going forward for the rest of the semester is write down your goals. Um, you know, write down how you want to perform in each one of your classes. Write down why you want to graduate, why you want to be in the major that you are being in. And writing those goals down kind of imprints it into your brain that this is what I need to do. <clears throat> and so you want to subconsciously tell yourself every day, this is what I'm striving for. This is what I'm striving for. And you won't even think about it. You'll just start doing it, right? And that's kind of what the situation we want us to be in, especially this semester. And so the best ways to kind of motivate yourself throughout the day is definitely constantly moving around, right? Don't just be stationary. Don't stay in one spot all the time. Move around, study here, study in the living room, study on the kitchen table, um, change your settings up. If you ever feel like you're hitting brain blocks or stuff like that, make sure you're going on walks, you're doing things for your own health and your own benefit. Um, and clear your mind, just clear your mind, sit down for 20 minutes and look at social media, do things like that. And that'll really help you um, keep your day going fresh and new and you're always ready to go. Um, and as a parent side, like how you can motivate your kids is make sure you're always calling them, texting them and stuff like that on the weekends. They're definitely not during the week unless they have free time, but on the weekends, especially. And I think that little call kind of reminds them of home um, and definitely kind of make sure they know that this is why I'm here. This is why my parents sent me here is to get an education, right? It's all the fun and everything is great to have, but this is why I'm here. And I think your parents can really support you in that way is making sure, hey, did you get all your homework done for this week? Or do you have any tests this week? And just simple questions like that really kind of make sure that you know that, hey, my parents are here supporting me. They want me to do well. They want me to succeed. Um, and I think that's the best advice I can give parents is make sure you're always communicating with your kids. Don't get frustrated or mad if they don't understand things, but just try to help them out the best way that you can. I, I think that's great advice. And I, I would agree with that too from the parent side. I, ha I have a freshman at a right now, actually. And, um, you know, this has been a challenging, this is a challenging situation. Uh, some of the students in my class reminded me, I think I knew this somewhere, but um, reminded me that many of them have not really been in school since March. Like, you know, because of COVID, a lot of schools went into recess early and some of them had strange or unusual graduations or maybe not even 
a ceremony that felt like a ceremony to them. And so the, the normal structures and the normal things that we would have expected to be in place just haven't been there. But what I, what I can say is that these kids are resilient. Um, I think for myself as a parent, I need my child to know that I believe he can do this, that I know it's hard, um, that I'm here for him if he, if and when he needs me, but I'm trying to find that balance between checking in every few days, but not like nagging and bothering and not texting him three or four times a day. Um, but then having a time to talk to him every week where we actually have a conversation and just, you know, how's it going? What do you need help with? If you feel like you've got it, then great. That's exactly what I want to hear. But if you have not got it, I'm here to help you try to figure that out. So like I said before, every parent, you know your child, you know what they need. Um, but this is also a time, I think, to instill in them the awareness that you know they can do this, that you know that they have strength and resilience and that you really believe in their ability to do it with appropriate support. And so that, that's kind of the balance that I'm trying to strike with my own with my own kiddo. Um, Ms. Grant, did you have anything to add to that? I think in regards to time management, um, I will say usually when I'm meeting with a student about time management, my first question is, do you have a planner or how do you plan your day? And literally every student will hand me this nice, expensive and I mean like more than ten dollars more than twenty dollars sometimes planner that has absolutely nothing in it it's just like a brand new book that has the year that you can't use next year <laughs> it's like okay um and I know you know I, I guess that's just on the what to get for school list just for whatever reason that's just the thing to get um but I would encourage uh, parents to you know ask their their children or their their uh, freshman student or sophomore or whatever the um, their um, classification may be you know how are they tracking their day or how are they planning their day like I understand if you're not you know like a visual person you may not want to write in a journal I mean not in a journal but in a planner you know that might not be aesthetically pleasing to you if you like technology, how you, you know, use a, a, a digital calendar or put something in your phone. Like if your cell phone is your life, use that, you know, put, um, they have to do this, they have reminders, set those things, like give you, you know, however you best, um, however you can best track yourself, use that mode. So yeah, I don't like a planner, it's just a book and you know it doesn't do anything unless I go and put something in it or go back and reflect on what I put in it that's understanding but how about let me use a phone let me track it in my computer let me use you know google or um, a gmail account like, there's so many different ways you can track uh, and, and make sure that you're being productive so I don't want the I don't know what to do to turn into I'm not doing anything so just you know as a as, as a parent asking the student, okay, can I see your planner? Can you flip some pages? Is there something written in it? Be honest, because if it's not, let's talk about, I can research some other ways that you can, um, you know, here are some planner apps. Here's another calendar. Here's a Google account. You know, we can, we can find a way to make sure that you know what your responsibility is every day or every week. There's some way that you can check in with yourself to make sure that you are you know meeting tasks or um you know how do you know if you're checking off you know things to help you reach that goal that cole was talking about making that, that list of you, you, you wrote some things on a list where is the list can you find it so that you know the, <laughs> those kind of things um, as far as being you know held accountable i think that's very um important in time management Thank you. <clears throat> the last big topic that our coaching staff had identified um, as we plan for this is self care as and I know we talked about social, emotional and mental health, uh, but self care kind of flips that more toward 
the actions that one can take. And so I think we were going to start with Madison. Okay. So self-care is something that I, I guess you can say discovered more so over the course of the summer in the midst of quarantine and whatnot, because I had ample time to myself, so might as well do something with it. Um, I now am an avid reader of self-help books, as cheesy as I once thought it was. There are words in there that inspired me in, a, in such a way that it's, it's affected my academics in a positive way, my self-worth in a positive way, how I view myself and my outward projection of who I am to others in a positive way. So reading self-help books, I now take weekly bubble baths with Epsom salt and lavender, and it is the most relaxing thing on the planet. And taking time out of my day to do my skincare routine, do my face mask, I now braid my own hair. Even though it is taxing and tiring, it's something fun that I can do for myself. And I know students, students my age, our age, aren't always too keen on like taking a step back and focusing on themselves because they're so busy trying to socialize and find new friends and find something to do, join the clubs, get A's in class and all that stuff. Taking a step back, I think has been the biggest gift quarantine has given me. And, and, and from that has come a lot of self-reflection and a lot of self-improvement. So taking time in those off days when you do have time off to look at yourself, see if there's anything you want to improve or just making peace and accepting where you're at is also a form of self, um, self-care in my opinion is being accepting yourself for who you are and on the parent side that goes for y'all too self-care works for everyone and it's also a form of connecting with your children oh uh son or daughter did you take your bubble bath tonight did you enjoy it did you have fun oh yes i did mom or dad and that that kind of conversation of just checking in on your kids making sure that they're taking care of themselves because that's something a lot of i saw a lot of my friends freshman year fall into that trap of being so overwhelmed by all of the options that they forgot that they themselves were also an option. And it sometimes took parents intervening or the school intervening because we do have a student care and well-being division that can do uh, check-ins on students. It took those kind of external steps for them to realize I really have not been taking care of myself. And so this would be a time in which to figure out what you enjoy most in reference to what pleases you and elevates your um, vision of yourself. Great advice. Thank you. Austin had, I'm sorry, Austin, <laughs> your name is not Austin. Cole's name starts with Austin. <laughs> and so sometimes I see the email and I keep saying the wrong thing. I apologize. I know your name is Cole. You have some good advice. Yes. Yes. Um, my name is Austin, but it's also Cole at the same time. But anyways, um, yeah, I think some self-care for students uh, especially right now is um, kind of working on things that you've always wanted to do. Uh, we have a lot of free time not having to walk through classes and get home and stuff like that because the majority of our stuff is online right now. Um, it's just find something that you've always wanted to do and try to go out and accomplish it. Um, over the summer my dad and I had always wanted to do some construction projects together and so we bought a bunch of wood one day and we started building right and, and you know, there was some um, things to learn along the way. We didn't do everything perfectly, but it was a lot of fun. You know, it was just enjoyable to do with him, and it was enjoyable to learn how to use the, those tools and how to measure and make sure everything was put together. And so I know that's kind of like a bigger project that I did with my dad, but you can take that and you can even do that at home. I know my roommate is a big advocate of um, EDM music, and so he started to learn how to create EDM. He bought a program, he bought a board and everything, He's starting to learn how to create his own sort of EDM. And so I think that's really cool for him to kind of take his mind off of uh, um, more math-based classes and focus on more artistic and creative side of his brain. And so that kind of creates a balance within himself that he's always doing something, but it's stuff that is going to take his mind away from school, but also something that he's passionate and enjoys. Um, so I think that's really one big thing that we can tell our new students this year is find something that you want to do, find something that you never wanted to do, and go out and do that. And then as a parent, um, I think one big thing is you can help your students, right? Like you can send them packages like, hey, 
I heard you needed this for your project or I heard you needed this for your whatever it might be, like a guitar pick to learn how to play guitar or whatever. And so just sending them those packages, making sure that, hey, I'm there for you. I'm trying to help you whatever way I can, especially during this time. I think that really makes you feel better. And you can also carry that on for the rest of their time here. Uh, my mom sends me packages. She actually just sent me a package yesterday. Um, and so getting those and receiving those just makes you feel good. Um, and it's something that you definitely needed before that you didn't have. So I think that's one thing parents can help your child with. Thank you. Those are such good ideas. And I agree with, with engaging the creative part of the brain. There's a whole lot of, of the logical and the analytical that is going on in classes. And, um, and it's good, it's good to, to, to have some things to do that are, that are not that, that are more creative, more kind of open-ended, more exploratory, perhaps. Um, I certainly find that that's true for myself. I, when I finish my work day, I go to my little uh, studio and, and paint and it's how I relax and, and kind of chill out. And so I always encourage my students to try to find something like that, that is that winding down creative kind of thing to do. And Ms. Grant also had some really good advice uh, for self-care as related to academics. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I would say just self care, just in and of itself. You know, um, basic self care is really good. Um, I did when we were speaking about this earlier. Um, so just making sure that you are taking a bath or taking a shower every day. You know that you're changing your clothes. So like that good fresh pair of pajamas. You know, kind of works. Um, because I know kind of being um, sedentary and being in the same space, and I know it's probably difficult. There are people in residence halls like, oh, we have a community shower. Who wants to do all of that? I understand. Um, but just finding ways to make sure that you are taking care of like kind of the basic needs and making sure that you are kind of washing away the the woes of yesterday and and, and kind of facing a, a new day you know with a fresh body and a fresh mind we'll say that um so kind of doing all that you can in the space or the limited space that you're given you know that that definitely does help um with your mindset um in regards to self-care again i think it, it definitely goes back to just how you're going to to manage what you're doing so when we talk about uh, having a planner, using a planner or a planner app, or finding a way to make sure that you are meeting your daily goals, your weekly goals, your monthly goals, you know, whatever works for you doing that. Um, also, creating a space for pr productivity. So making sure, you know, you have a table available. If it's a small table, big table, table tray, you know, something that you can put your laptop on or a pad or a pencil. Um, just something that, you know, helps you get out, of, get out of the bed, even if you have to sit on the floor, you know, just a place where you know when I'm at this place, I'm being productive. I'm doing something um, that's scholastically inclined because it is definitely good to find that balance of educational and then also just artistic expression that's very important. Um, but you do need to make sure that when you are in work mode for school, for classes that you have a, a defined space to do that. Um, I talked about maybe creating some stations, you know, so you're not just, I sat on my floor for eight hours a day. No, I sat on my floor for three hours. I sat back on my bed with a table or I have like a little study desk that I can sit at for a couple of hours. Then I walked around outside or I walked to the end of the street um, if you're in an apartment complex, I walk to the swimming pool or, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, building those things into your day can be very effective also. Um, and it, it can kind of make you include your study time, and your class time, kind of like a, a job, I would say, too. You know, I always tell people, if you have issues with time management, just approach it like a job, like an eight to five. You know, you do 
something to take a break and do some more. Uh, but then when you get kind of at the Madison level where you can really be very specific about these are things I need to do, when I'm not doing that, I can do these things. When I'm not doing those things, you know, these little five to 10 minute gaps can get this kind of attention, you know, but you have to work yourself up to that level. Um, so, you know, having just chunks of time that you do things in is totally fine right now. But it's all about kind of finding that rhythm and finding that routine that you can build upon. So self-care for me, find a routine. Parents can help find a routine by asking questions. Or what are you do, doing? What are some test dates and due dates? Um, where are you with those? You know, I know you have a test on, you know, September 9th. It's September 5th. Are you studying for your test for September 9th? Why are you not studying? You know, and I know you don't want to just, you know, be that, have someone in court, you know, on a stand. That's not the, the mentality you want to give your your um, your children or your, your uh, college students, I apologize. Um, but be, but inquiring about them, and, and, and sometimes that, that helps to jog their mind also. Because if they're not writing it down, they forgot it. So they may be like, oh, I got a test. <laughs> oh, let me write down. Yeah, so that, you know, questions are good in that sense if you know that your child needs help with um, time management skills. I know that was kind of a little bit of everything, but yeah, time management, yeah, important. That's all really good advice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm laughing because every time I talk to the coaches about anything at all, they keep coming back to time management. That That is really central. And I'll also say, just to close that out, that we're here for your students. And we hope that uh, if students need to talk to someone about self-care or getting a routine that works, especially during these challenging times or how to connect with people, that's what the coaching staff is here for. Um, we've got six peer coaches and we have Ms. Grant and um, we would love to have the opportunity to work with your students. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, one more question. So I know sometimes parents feel that they need to call or make an appointment for their student if the student is not at a place where they can do that or, um, or if the student just refuses to call or uh, to make an appointment. Do y'all allow parents and family members to schedule appointments for students? That's a really good question. We, uh, we do occasionally get a request from a parent. And so we have kind of a request contact form that we'll, we get to pretty immediately throughout the day. And we will have parents fill those out for students sometimes. Um, and that, that's okay. If that's, if that's our doorway into that conversation, that's, that's okay. Um, but we will at that point reach out directly to your student and try to get something set up. And I would encourage you not to surprise them. Oh, by the way, you know, I sent in a coaching request for you three days ago and now they're saying, well, that's, <laughs> that's why that person's been calling me. Um, it, so just um, good communication is key. We're happy to act on the um, request of a parent, but at that point, the conversation will be between us and the student. I just wanted to interject because when you asked the question, I started to giggle because <laughs> we get a lot of parents <laughs> that will, you know, write a thesis about <laughs> this student and the student is not for it. Like, we will get a, a lot of parents that say, my child needs this help, please help them. You contact the child, they're like, I don't need help. I don't know why they said that. You know, like, it's, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a, you know, I, I would say definitely if you think this is something that um, your student can um, learn from, if this is a good resource for them, really talk to them about it and just urge them to make the appointment because we do have higher um, I guess rates of it actually being an appointment when the student is interested in in the process. Um, if it's not, it's just kind of like I went because my father made me or my mother made me or someone made me do it, and we can tell when they meet with us. 
because it's kind of like we have to sell them this <laughs> at this point. And they're doing just enough to say that they did it. Um, so I, I definitely say uh, with, with coaching, um, the, our most successful cases with it have been from students who genuinely want the help or they have tried other um, ways to kind of fix something or to address the areas of concern and they know they need guided help. And so, yeah, them wanting to do it, that kind of self-awareness is, is, is a really important piece of this process. Thank you. So, do y'all have anything else to add before we wrap up? <laughs> go ahead, Madison. There we go. So to echo Dr. Ruth Burnett and Ms. Grant on merging academics and self-care, an act of um, academic self-care is reaching out to our facilities. It takes, and I understand where students' minds can sometimes be, you're, you're not performing as well as you thought you did or as well you, as you used to in high school. That's something I've encountered a lot with quite a few freshmen. I just breezed through high school. I didn't have to study much. Things just came to me easy. I did amazing on my test and that, that didn't translate over to college. So it takes, as Ms. Grant was saying, it takes a student realizing they need assistance and then reaching out to the appropriate resources, i.e. the CCSS, um, to have that, that kind of metamorphosis happen. And so it very much consider asking for help and assistance as a form of another form of self-care in reference to your academics. Thank you so much, Madison. And thank, thank all of you for your time and spending time with our family members, um, just kind of giving them um, some history and background on how to support their student and the history of just your office and what you do. Um, we are so grateful to have you all as partners and look forward to a semester of students filling your offices and Zoom um, meetings with you all as well. Um, I just want to encourage family members and parents to stay tuned into our webinar Wednesdays. This is something that we will do every Wednesday in September. Uh, the, our next webinar will be about coaching your student through conflict um, and a faculty member from um, community, not community, communications will be discussing that topic with us. Um, and so I would definitely say, please tune back in to that. And we just thank you so much and roll tide.